Assalamu alaikum. My name is Zubair Mehtab. I am from Nitu district of Bangladesh. I am a student. Is there any bigger reward than Jannatul Firdaus al A'la? If so, how can it be achieved? First, inshallah, I will discuss the levels and the degrees in Jannah. And then, inshallah, I will discuss regarding Jannatul Firdaus and Jannatul Firdaus al A'la. And is there any bigger reward than this? And how can it be achieved? So first we'll discuss the levels and the degrees of Jannah. Jannah paradise, it has levels and it has degrees. And we understand this based on verse of the glorious Quran and ahadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, Surah Al-Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 21. Umbur kayfa faddalna ba'dhum ala ba'dh. Look how we have favored some of them over the others. But the hereafter, it is greater in difference and greater in terms of distinction. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Al-An'am, chapter number 6, verse number 132. And each will be ranked based upon what he does. From these words of the glorious Quran, we understand that based on the deeds of a human being, he will be ranked in the afterlife. And if he does more good deeds, more righteous deeds, he will be in higher levels of paradise, that is Jannah. And even according to Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, may Allah have mercy on him, even he said that paradise, it has levels and it has degrees. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, Surah Al-Rahman, chapter number 55, verses 46 to 48, that he who fears the standing before his Lord are two gardens. Again, from this verse of the glorious Quran, we understand that there are levels in paradise. And the scholars, they say that this verse, it refers to levels in paradise. And the difference between two levels in paradise, it will be a huge difference. As our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, it is mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 2790, that the difference between one level of Jannah and the other level of Jannah, it is like the difference between the heavens and the earth. So paradise, it will have levels and it will have degrees. And paradise needs to have levels and it needs to have degrees. Because how can you put a person who has done more good deeds, more righteous deeds, he has dedicated his life for the sake of Islam, he is a righteous human being, how can you put him in the same level of Jannah as the person who is an average Muslim and who is not a very righteous Muslim and who has not dedicated his life for the sake of Islam. So based upon the deeds, a person he will be admitted into paradise and if he does more of good deeds, more of righteous deeds, he will be admitted into higher levels of Jannah, into higher levels of paradise. So paradise without doubt it has levels. And our blood Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, it is mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 3083 that the people of paradise, they will look at the highest place in paradise. Like how someone looks at a brilliant star in the horizon, in the east or the west. And the Sahaba, they asked our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is this highest place in paradise, is it reserved only for the prophets? So our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, no, by him in whose hand my soul is, it is for men who believed in Allah and believed in the messengers. In another hadith, our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, it is mentioned in Tirmidhi, hadith number 3658, that the people in the highest place in Jannah, they will be seen by those people who are lower than them. And Abu Bakr and Umar, radiallahu an, they will be in the highest place in Jannah. From these two hadiths, we understand that paradise, it has levels. And as far as the total number of levels in paradise, there is no authentic hadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, nor any verse of the glorious Quran, which says that, or which tells us the total number of levels and degrees in paradise. But based on certain hadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the scholars, they say that paradise, it has levels. And the first opinion, as far as the levels of paradise or the levels in paradise is concerned is that paradise it has 
several levels equal to the number of verses in the glorious Quran. That is more than 6,000 levels in paradise. 6,236 levels in paradise equal to the number of verses in the glorious Quran. And they base this on a hadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him that is mentioned in Sunan ibn Majah hadith number 3780 that the person who has memorized the Quran, it will be said to him on the day of judgment that to keep reciting the glorious Quran and keep rising up le the levels in paradise. And for every verse he recites the glorious Quran, it will be said to him that rise, for every verse he recites from the glorious Quran, he will be raised one degree in paradise. So based on this, the scholars, they say that paradise, it has several levels equal to the number of verses in the glorious Quran. The second opinion of the scholars is that paradise, it has 100 levels. And they base this on the hadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that is mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 2790. Man that whoever believes in Allah and believes in the messenger and establishes prayer and fast in the month of Ramadan, it is incumbent upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to admit him into paradise. Even if he does not fight in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he remains in the place where he was born. So the Sahaba, they asked Abdullah Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, should we give this glad to the people? So our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that paradise, it has hundred levels that is reserved for the mujahideen fi sabilillah. That is reserved for those people who fight in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the difference between one level of paradise and the other level of paradise is like the difference between the heavens and the earth. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said in the same hadith, وَإِذَا سَأَلْتُمُ اللَّهِ فَاسْأَلْهُ الْفِرْدَوْسِ That if you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is, if you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Jannah, ask Him for Jannatul Firdaus. For it is the highest level in Jannah. So from this hadith of the glories, from this hadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, we understand that paradise, it has levels, and the highest level in paradise that is reserved for the believers, as far as the believers are concerned, it is Jannatul Firdaus. Or certain scholars they say that it is Jannatul Firdaus and Allah, but it is generally referring to Jannatul Firdaus, whether you call it Jannatul Firdaus or you call it Jannatul Firdaus Al A'la. So the second opinion is that paradise it has hundred levels. But other group of scholars they say that this hadith which says that paradise it has hundred levels, this only refers to hundred levels in paradise that is reserved for the Mujahideen, for the Mujahideen fi sabirillah, for those people who do jihad, for those people who fight in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is exclusively reserved for them these hundred levels in paradise. Whereas besides this, there are several other levels. So minimum, the number of levels in paradise, there are hundred levels, but naturally there are more than hundred levels in paradise. And we understand this from this hadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And as far as this word Al-Firdaus, referring to Jannatul Firdaus, it is mentioned in the Glorious Quran no less than two times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Glorious Quran, Surah Al-Kahf, chapter number 18, verse number 107. <laughs> Those who believe and do righteous deeds, for them Jannatul Firdaus, that is the highest level of paradise. It is referring to Jannatul Firdaus. It is their abode. And a similar message is also repeated in Surah Al Mu'minun, chapter number 23. Al -firdaus hum fiha that they are the people who will be admitted into Jannatul Firdaus. Talking about the believers and the first few verses of Surah Al Mu'minun, the qualities of the believers are mentioned that they are in their prayers. They have khushu in their prayers and various other qualities that are mentioned of the believers. So even in the glorious Quran, this word Al-Firdaus is mentioned talking about Jannatul Firdaus. And there is a level in Jannah 
that is specifically reserved for our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And this is mentioned in the hadith that is narrated by Imam Ahmad and it is also narrated by, it is also mentioned in Jamat Tirmidhi. And this level, it is called as al wasila and it is mentioned in the hadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that this level, it is only reserved for one person. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said in the same hadith, that is mentioned in Jamat Tirmidhi, that this, I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I hope that I am the person who is admitted into this level in Jannah. So the scholars, they say that this is specifically reserved for our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And in another hadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, it is mentioned that this level of Jannah, which is called as al wasila it is the highest level in paradise. So certain scholars, they say that this level in Jannah that is known as al wasila it is a part of Jannatul Firdaus and it is the highest level of Jannatul Firdaus that is reserved only for our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Other group of scholars, they say that it is not part of Jannatul Firdaus, but rather it is another part of paradise, but it is higher than Jannatul Firdaus and it is the highest level in paradise, which is reserved for our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. In any which ways, whether it is a part of Jannatul Firdaus or whether it is not a part of Jannatul Firdaus, it is the highest level in paradise and this is exclusively reserved for our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and blessings be upon him. As far as the believers are concerned, for them the highest level is Jannatul Firdaus or Al Firdaus Al A'la. And the best reward that the believers will receive, besides Jannatul Firdaus, the best reward that the believers will receive is seeing the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What a beautiful reward. And there are several ahadiths of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And there's also reference to this in the glorious Quran, Surah Al Qiyamah, verses 22 and 23. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wujuhun yawma idhin nadira ila rabbiha nadira. That on that day the faces will be brightened when they look at the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell the people of paradise that. Do you require anything more? So the people, once they are admitted into paradise, they will tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what else can we ask for? You have given us everything. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the universe, Jalla Jalalu, He will reveal His face. And this will be the best reward for the believers they will not find any other thing more pleasing and more content. They will not find anything that is more pleasing than seeing the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This will be the best reward for the believers. And if a person, he is in the higher level of paradise, for example, if he's in Jannatul Firdaus, he will see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more often. And this will be the best thing that a believer can have in paradise. This will be the most delightful thing. So we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he make us from among the believers and may he make us from among those people who are admitted into Jannatul Firdaus بغير حساب, without accountability. Now coming to the last part of your question that how can it be achieved? If a person wants to enter Jannah, if a person wants to enter paradise, minimum four criteria are required. The first is, and this is mentioned in the glorious Quran, Surah Al Asr, chapter number 103, verse number 1 to 3. Wal Asr, by time. Inna al insana lafi khusr. Verily, man is in a state of loss. Illa ladina amanu, except for those who believe. Wa amilu salihat, and do righteous deeds. Wa tawasaw bil haq, exhort people towards truth that is doing dawah. Wa tawasaw bil sabr, exhort people towards patience and perseverance. Minimum four criteria are required for a person to enter Jannah. So this is the basic requirement if a person wants to enter Jannah. But if a person wants to enter higher levels of paradise, higher levels of Jannah, then he should try to do more of these four things. He should try to 
has a higher level of iman he should try to do more of good deeds more of righteous deeds he should try to do more of dawa dedicate his life for conveying the message of islam and he should try to have more of patience and perseverance so then inshallah he will enter into higher levels of jannah and if a person wants to enter the highest level of jannah al firdaus inshallah if he follows four things that i have mentioned inshallah we hope and we pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that a person he will enter jannah al firdaus the first is that do all the things that are fard all the things that are compulsory in islam and this is very important for example tawhid which is the most important which is the most important thing in islam and besides this offer the five daily prayer give zakah fast in the month of ramadan and try to do all the things that are fard all the things that are compulsory in islam do not miss anything that is fard or compulsory in islam the second is do all the things that abstain the second is abstain from all the things that are haram that are prohibited in islam for example missing or being negligent about the five daily prayer not fasting in the month of ramadan not giving zakah doing other major sins for example drinking alcohol involving in riba robbery etc abstain from all of the things that are haram especially the major sins and also abstain from the minor sins and if you want to enter the highest levels in jannah you should see to that you abstain from all sins the major sins as well as the minor sins the third is try to do almost all the things that are mustahab the things that are sunnah in islam and certain sunnah they are more important than the others one of the most important sunnah acts in islam is offering the tahajjud prayer and offering the tahajjud prayer in the last part in the last one third of the night this is one of the best deeds that a believer can do there are various sunnah acts and there are many muslims they do certain sunnah acts which are sunnah acts no doubt a person will get reward but they neglect the other sunnah acts which are very important for example a person he will call certain friends at his house or for example a person he will wear white clothes on friday no doubt it is a good act it is a sunnah act but a person will do this sunnah and he will think that he has done sunnah he has done a sunnah act and he will neglect the other sunnah acts which are important for example offering the tahajjud prayer without doubt offering tahajjud prayer is much more important than for example wearing white clothes on juma or wearing the best of clothes on juma or calling your friends for dinner or for lunch so we need to see which sunnah acts are more important as compared to the others the muslims many of them unfortunately they cho- they choose certain sunnah acts which is convenient and easy for them and they neglect the other sunnah acts which are more important so we should try to follow almost all the things that are sunnah that are mustahab in islam and the fourth is try to abstain from almost all the things that are makru that are prohibited in islam for example missing the witr prayer for example drinking water while standing etc if you follow these four points inshallah we hope that allah subhanahu wa taala he will admit us into jannatul firdaus that is the highest level in jannah and also we should stick to the glorious quran read the glorious quran with understanding implement on it and also read the authentic hadith of our beloved prophet muhammad peace be upon him if we do so inshallah we hope that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will admit us into the gardens of paradise and he will admit us into jannatul firdaus we pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he admit us into jannatul firdaus without accountability ameen